In this video, we'll be proving that addition on the natural numbers is commutative. Now, first to start, we have the inductive type nat, which is the inductive type defined with two constructors, O for zero, and S giving the successor. Now, addition is a function of two arguments, two natural numbers, X and Y, and it's defined by recursion over the first argument, the X. And when X is zero, we simply return Y, and when x is some successor of an x prime, then we recursively call plus on x prime and y and return the successor. Now, the property we would like to prove is commutativity of this plus. So in other words, we want to prove for every x and y that plus xy is the same as plus yx. We'll prove this by induction on x. This leaves us with two sub-goals. The first one is the base case, and it's to prove 0 plus y is y plus 0. We can simplify this claim using the definition of plus, and it reduces to y equals y plus 0. Now, how can we prove this claim? We need a lemma. The lemma will be that whenever you add something to 0, you don't change it. So let's state and prove this lemma. The lemma says that for every natural number x, if we add x to 0, we get x. We'll prove this by induction on x. Again, we have two cases. This time, the base case is 0 plus 0 is 0. When we simplify this using the definition of plus, the claim of the goal is simply 0 equals 0, which we have by reflexivity. Now in the other case, the inductive case, we need to prove that when you add the successor of x to 0, you get the successor of x. Again, we can simplify this using the definition of plus, and it reduces to proving that the successor of x plus 0 is the successor of x. Now in this case, we have an inductive hypothesis. The inductive hypothesis says that when you add x to 0, you get x. If we rewrite with the inductive hypothesis, then the claim is simply successor of x equals successor of x. And again, this follows by reflexivity. Now using this lemma, we can finish the first case of the commutativity proof. We simply rewrite with the lemma and then use reflexivity. Now let's consider the second case. It says if you add sx to y, then you get the same thing as if you add y to sx. Again, we can simplify using the definition of plus. After simplifying, the right-hand side of the equation is the successor of x plus y. In this case, we have an inductive hypothesis which says you have commutativity for x and y. In other words, x plus y is y plus x. We can rewrite with the inductive hypothesis and then the claim of the goal is the successor of y plus x is y plus successor of x. At this point, we're stuck again. We need some lemma that tells us that when we add something to the successor, we can pull that successor out. Uh, just like we have a lemma for when 0 is the second argument, we need a lemma that talks about what happens when the successor is the second argument. So let's state and prove this lemma. Let's call the lemma plus s. It says for all natural numbers x and y, if you add x to the successor of y, then you get the successor of adding x to y. We'll prove this by induction on x. And as always, we have two cases. The first case, we simplify, and it reduces to something that can easily be solved by reflexivity. And in the second case, we simplify. And again, we have an inductive hypothesis, which is an equation. We can rewrite with the inductive hypothesis and use reflexivity. Now, if we return to the second case of our main proof, we can rewrite with this lemma, and that will make the right-hand side of the equation the same as the left-hand side of the equation. And then we can finish the proof with reflexivity. 
So this example demonstrates that sometimes you need lemmas to make an inductive proof go through.